Okay. Start with my talk. Um, what is in the trunk of your database? It's a little bit confusing, but we're basically talking about what's inside of the database. So your file system and how your database handles all this stuff. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm Julian. I'm working at Rust Media Digital in Schwarzach. I'm working with Laravel, Next.js, Node.js, and databases a lot. Um, as well, I, as I do some DevOps stuff, for example, the CI CD pipeline I have done with Philip. Um, okay, so what are the topics for today? First, we talk about database storage engines overall. After that, we will talk about hash indexes, um, SS tables, and B trees. After that, we will talk about the performance differences between all of these different uh, storage engines. OK, so <clears throat> databases store data in an ordered manner. If not, if they are un uh, unordered, this would lead to large select times. So, but too much order leads to low insert time. So we need to find a, 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 a solution which orders the data, but doesn't order it too much that we have um, large insert time. So that, uh, there is always a payoff. Um, there are already a lot of solutions for this problem, and we are looking at three. Um, but two are basically the same with a little extra of it. OK, so let's first start with hash indexes. Hash indexes is a kind of um, storage engine which is only stored in memory. It basically uses a hash table or hash map in memory, which has as a key um, an index or something, and as value points to an address in a part of a file. So if we look in the next slide, you can see it here a little bit better. In the memory, there is this um, key Bob, for example. It has an offset of zero. So on our file on disk, we look at the offset on zero and see here the key Bob with some value like ID one here. And for Don, the second one, we have an offset of 17. So we look at the 17th byte bit. No bytes, sorry. <laughs> um, and see here says Don. So the same as here above with his ID. OK, so this is the basics. So for inserts, let's look at the operations we can do with this. Um, for inserts, we can add a key to the hash table and append to file. So we just add it in the memory and append it at the end of the file. For updates, we search the key in the hash table, append the data to the file, and replace the offset. So we basically have an immutable store. So we don't change any existing data. We only up, um, add stuff to it. For Selects, it's quite easy because we can just search the key in the memory and fetch the data from the file at the offset. Um, but if you notice, if we only update by um, adding to this file, this file will, will get huge. So we create segment files after a certain amount. For example, after one um, megabyte of data, we create a segment file. And now we have another problem. There will be duplicates in our old segment because every update, um, every update creates a new key. For example, here we see Bob with ID one, but after some time we saw um, we change it to Bob with ID two, and so we have a lot of duplicates in here. So there is a process in this called deduplication which creates a new file segment with only the two um, up-to-date keys. So we take the last one for John. Here it's ID 11. And we take the last one of Bob. Here it's ID 4. And now we create a new file segment. But if we do this for a long time, we could have even more problems because maybe in this segment, in this old segment, another user isn't even in there. 
So we have a lot of these segment files, which we need to search as well. But for that part, we have a merge process as well. So Bob, for example, here in this segment file, we have Bob and Don. In this second segment file, we have Bob and Emma. But um, after the merge, rec merge, we have Bob, Emma, and Don. So we basically have, um, we have different data in different files. So we, already, we need to include in our hash table in memory, the file as well. Okay, now for a quick summary over this ha these hash indexes. They have very fast reads because we only need to go into memory and, and look into the, look in the memory, look in the hash map, look at the value and write the data read the data, sorry. Um, sequential writes are faster than random writes. That means adding to a file is way faster than somewhere in the picking out in the file and um, updating in certain points. It's way faster. And immutability makes for easier concurrency. For example, crash recovery, because we um, only add to this file. So we never leave a half written, um, node somewhere in the file. It's always at the end and we see if there was a half written um, entry at the end. Disadvantages, disadvantages are the deletion is quite hard to do in this because um, we need to mark our entry as deleted and on the next merge process, we need to delete it. And the biggest disadvantage is the hash table needs to fit the memory. So we are bottleneck by the memory here because we can't only add memory to, to our um, server. So as workarounds, um, smart people at Google, I think Google created it, it at first, um, created a system based on this. It's called SS tables and it stands for sorted string tables. They are based on hash indexes, but the key value pairs are sorted by key and are unique. So we are not only randomly putting it in our files, we are sorting them by, by the key. Um, the sections are again split every few kilobytes, and this is used by Cassandra, HBase, Google Big Table, and InfluxDB. Um, if we see here, the merge process is, is easier in this, in this example, because we can do, these are all sorted by um, the key. So here we see Bob is always first um, before Don, even though Bob was added after it. So we can just um, use a merge, can use merge sort, which is quite a known algorithm and quite fast as well. Another big advantage of this is we don't need to keep all keys in memory because now we can just create a sparse, sparse index, which has a key every few kilobytes, for example, every segment. And we are just looking, okay, for example, we pick our user here, Boris, we want to get Boris. And now we can check our memory here. We can check Bill, oh, Boris is a um, bit higher, Bob, oh, Boris is still higher. And then comes Cassie. And then we find out Boris is um, somewhere between Bob and Cassie. And so we only scan this whole, um, this whole block or segment here. So we save some processing time. We need to scan this part every time we have to um, make a select. Um, advantages of SS tables are they have very fast writes because it's still append only and all the stuff from the hash indexes. Um, we have a lower disk footprint because we have um, compre can compress the blocks because we have to interact with them all the time. Um, we have not slow reads, but slower reads than um, 
than hash indexes because we will uh, need to scan a file first and load a load a file into into memory and the merging needs to happen in the background that's that's can be quite a performance hit if if it's at the wrong uh, at the wrong time okay so now look at the one you probably all are using and that's b trees these are balanced trees they were created already in the 1970s and are used in almost all relational and some NoSQL databases. For example, InnoDB is based on it, and this is probably the most um, known of all. Um, OK, the structure of a B tree is the data is split into fixed sized blocks. One block is used as a root of a tree, and the root has reference to other blocks. We can follow this reference to the keys we are searching. Now, to make this more clear, here we have a tree. Um, and for example, we want to pick out seven. And we have here our root, our starting uh, block. And OK, seven is lower than eight. So we go to the left, left side. OK, now we check with four again. And we see seven is higher than four. So we go to the right. OK, now we are at 6, and we see, oh, it's higher. 7 is still higher, so we go down here to select it. So it's quite easy and fast to select something, because we only have to check here for uh, three paths or three uh, blocks to get to our 7. OK, now look at the at inserts. Inserts are a little bit harder with. Uh, B trees because we have to first search the key like we just did, um, create a new block there, and tell the parent block to update this. This is quite um, can some time can take some time, and if we have bad luck, the whole tree needs to rebalance. To make this a little bit more understanding, I created a little animation or made a little animation where we insert some uh, values. So for example, here, the whole tree needs to rebalance again. And if we add a five, the tree needs to rebalance again. And now it's, it's always balanced. So this time sometimes uh, can take, take some time. And this is the biggest disadvantage of B trees. The inserts can rebalance the whole tree and cause some performance impact on your selects. Here we saw another whole shuffle of the, of the three levels. And we will see another one if we get to, to 15, which is after this one. So the parent, it needs the parent to tell the parent block that it's updated. And so every block up to the up to the root block needs to update. Okay, so what are advantages of B, B trees? They are, have very fast reads. The O notation is log n, which um, is really, really good. <laughs> Um, and additionally, we can store 256 terabytes of data in a four-level deep tree. The previous example was a three-level three deep tree. So if we only add one more level, we can store 265 terabytes of data. This is quite amazing. Um, but the disadvantages are keeping the balance, the balance takes processing time and the inserts are slow based on this balancing process. But now let's look at some comparison between these two. Uh, something funny is you can actually test this out with MariaDB. There is um, storage engines. One is called MyRocks. It is, it is based on SS tables. And then there is another one, which InnoDB, which is based on B trees. And so we can. Um, do quite a good comparison between the, those two. 
So these results are without performance tunings. Um, here we see the writes first. Here we see already as expected that uh, MyRox is way ahead of InnoDB because it doesn't need to balance the tree. If we go to mixed read-write performance, it's at first it's the, um, similar, um, but after some time there is um, it evens out. So we see that with 150 50 threads or connections, um, it's it's getting almost the same. But at the start, it's it's quite um, this quite a difference. If we go to read as expected, um, InnoDB is quite ahead because the the B tree is here in full full force, so the performance is way better. And if we go to deletes, it's way easier for InnoDB as well because um, my rocks has tombstones and all that stuff, which is way more way harder to process. And InnoDB only needs to go into the into the tree, delete it, and and update the parent um, no, blocks. So it's basically like, like an update or something on insert, basically. OK, so when to use what? Ask yourself, what do you need more? If you need re often read and delete options um, and update as well, here we can use better. It's better to use B trees. But if your application is often a lot more write heavy than read heavy, then I can recommend SS tables because um, they are way faster with, with mixed values and, and with write performance. So thank you for your attention and I hope I have some questions.